All you niggas wash up, y'all be wash gang. My niggas super sad, we be wash gang. All you niggas wash up, y'all be wash gang. So if you're a fan of Toronto rap, then you've heard songs by artists like Pressa, Burner Bands, Robin Banks, Houdini, and others. They've just been making a lot of noise in the music scene. Then you've probably heard of Wasp Gang, which is basically the biggest group out of Driftwood at the moment. Most people know the name of the gang derives from a person with an interesting story. So today, on Savages from the Six, we'll take a look at 21-year-old Quasi Peters, also known as Wasi. So there's no question that Wasi was well respected amongst his friends, enough to have a whole gang named after him, and for his friends to spend thousands of dollars having his face custom made into pendants for their chains. It's clear that he had credit and was well liked within his gang. That being said, let's get into the documented history of Wasi. So like many tales from Toronto, our story starts in the dangerous area of Driftwood, where Wasi grew up. He and a now popular rapper who goes by Pressa were friends from when they were little kids. Sadly, it was clear what path Wasi was headed down from a young age with his mother saying that he was getting into trouble with the law since he was 13 years old. Not only that, but in an interview with Vlad TV, Pressa actually gives a detailed glimpse into something gruesome that Wasi saw when he was a kid. My best friend Wasi, he seen somebody like, like basically there's a guy, he got shot on the, the on our neighborhood like plaza. The guy ran to like our bridge he walked over the bridge and he seen the guy die he's dead on the bridge you know and he's just a little kid like he was probably just like i don't know like 10 or 11 right so he was just like two years older than me at this time so he walked and he's like fuck you know like that's a lot for a kid to see him like a guy dead on the floor you know and then that guy he was never he even my teacher said like quasi would never be the same after that you know so Seeing something that grotesque as a child is bound to have some type of effect on a growing mind. Wasi spent several years of his early teen life in and out of the juvenile detention system. When he was 16, while he was locked at Roy McMurtry Youth Center in Brampton, Wasi was a subject of a news report named From the Margins, Building Curriculum for Youth in Transition. In an interview, Wasi talks with a reporter about how being caught in the system as a young offender has turned him into a quote-unquote monster and that every day he is fighting for his life. It seems like he had a rough time in this prison and he continues to detail his experiences and talks more about the mindset of a youth offender in this report. Now we go back a few years before the interview. While still in the youth center, Wasi's neighborhood Driftwood and his alleged gang were under scrutiny by the police. They had been organizing a sting dubbed Project Marvel targeting an alleged gang in the Chain and Finch area called the Young Buck Killers. Ranging from locations in Toronto to Surrey, BC, the police executed multiple raids and ended up seizing almost 30 guns and over $110,000 in cash. Over 400 charges were laid against 60 suspects, one of those being Wasi. Even though he was locked up at the time, he was still charged for his connection with the gang. Being tied to this police project, as well as seeing someone die at a young age, is what drew reporters and journalists to Wasi. So now we go forward in time again, to a few months after the interview. Wasi's charges in connection to Project Marvel stick, but he manages to be granted bail and he is released. He would then go on to enjoy his freedom for a short couple of years before being arrested on weapons charges a short time after his 18th birthday. Now it's not clear when he got back to the jail for his charges, but he was last documented being locked up in late 2013. He ended up being released at some point after. So now things become heinous in the story. We're brought to the morning of June 28, 2015. Police were called to a condo at 36 Lisgar Street, around Queen Street and Dover Court Road, after a frantic call reported several gunshots being fired. When emergency crews arrived, they found two men deceased in the unit on the 22nd floor suffering from obvious trauma. They would later be identified as Abdiweli Abdullahi 
and Muhammad Deary, both aged 26. There was one woman in the unit at the time who actually climbed over the balcony and onto the neighbor's balcony to try to escape the shooting. Now this woman wasn't cooperating with police, but their investigation still came up with two suspects. 23-year-old Kamal Hassan and Kwasi Peters were named as the suspects and the police issued warrants and put out wanted posters for their arrest. Less than a week after the double murder, Kamal Hassan voluntarily turned himself into police. Wasi, on the other hand, was nowhere to be found and considered to be on the run at this point. There's even surveillance video of Kamal and Wasi in an elevator at a different building shortly after the murders. Kamal is seen reenacting what just went down, almost emotionless to the fact that two people were just brutally murdered. Now while Kamal was in police custody, they had turned their focus on finding Wasi. This search would last for almost a month before they finally found him. So now we're taken to the early hours of July 25th, 2015, to a nightclub that's near Peter Street and Adelaide Street West. Police located Wasi and they knew he was in the club. Uniformed and undercover officers staked outside the building and waited for him to come out. Once Wasi was outside, they surveilled him and watched as he walked through the parking lot and got into his car. This is when the police were ready to make the arrest. A bunch of cruisers swarmed in and blocked off the entrance of the parking lot. A few officers on bikes close in and there's no sound but there's shooting going on between the cops and Wasi. You can see officers ducking for cover behind cars. Then you can see Wasi in a gray sweatshirt run towards the street but trips and falls and lands in front of the cruiser where he's subdued. The aftermath was over 30 shots being exchanged with police saying that Wasi fired the first of seven shots inside his car through the windshield. Out of all those shots fired, he was only struck with a single bullet to his chest. He was quickly rushed to the hospital, but died a short time after. Now after his death, the co-accused in the case, Kamal, began to explain what happened to police. He claimed that it was solely Wasi who shot the two men in the Lisgar condo, and he played no part in the murders. He said he feared Wasi and stuck by him after the shooting because he didn't know what he might do. During his trial, which was four years later, in March of 2019, Kamal also claimed that the footage of him in the elevator reenacting the murders was actually just a ploy to make Wasi think that he wouldn't snitch on him. With the co-accused Wasi having died, it seems like it was an easy case for a defense lawyer. Seemingly, the aftermath of the trial was Kamal being found not guilty on all charges. He was acquitted and effectively beat the case. No one knows why exactly Wasi decided to shoot at the officers. We can only speculate. All of the officers involved were cleared of any wrongdoing after the police dash cam footage surfaced. It seems like Kwasi had a rough life, and honestly it's a sad end to his story. But he continues to live on through Was Gang and through their music. All we can say for now is rest in peace.